the I erased the hoo -ha. Oh, that's all right. Um, so uh, let's, I can jump to, um, uh, so anyway, uh, welcome to the Senior Housing Subcommittee meeting. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely at the Deerfield Town Hall located at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. All are welcome. Meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, that may not be the most updated announcement, but there we are. We are doing this remotely. And Carolyn is just about to join us. Um, okay, but what, since Carolyn wasn't here, Anna Lee, do you, uh, I move that we approve the minutes for June 17th. I second. Uh, all those in favor, Lily Dwight, aye. And I will go aye. Okay, great. And then Carolyn was there for the June 24th meeting, so when she joins us, I will uh, have her ask her to look at them. There wasn't much. We were just preparing for the select board meeting. So hopefully that will be that. OK. Um, and what I'm putting down here, and then Karen will be coming here. Um, I don't know how she does it. Oh my gosh. I know. That's crazy. I come home from those meetings and I am just so keyed up. Yeah. You know? Okay, so I have down here what our next steps um, were after the select board presentation. Mm -hmm. um, to verify, but we're supposed to meet with. Well, that's a good question. So the, we had proposed to that. Oh, here comes Stanley Yazwinski is entering the waiting room. Stanley is joining us. Okay. I don't know if that it Carolyn, that's not Stanley. <laughs> hey! Oh I know, I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't know why it's Stanley Yazwinski. Here you are. <laughs> oh, oh my uh and she CC used, used of her and she crayon. Used, uh, skip oh. In the oh, okay. So I guess I got on Skip's Zoom account by accident. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm really oh, apologize for being late. We're no talking worries. about mosquito stuff. Mosquitoes. We, we, we know. know. We know about your relationship with mosquitoes. <laughs> All is good. <laughs> anyway, um, I have to say, Lily, you did such a good job. You and Emily um, presenting stuff, and um, as a result, it, it's a, a top priority. You know, agreed. Agreed. Top priority. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, and actually, there was no discussion, so you didn't miss anything. Anna Lee okay. will verify. We didn't even talk about senior housing. It was just listed. OK, and great. We spent, we spent most of all the time talking about the social worker because, you know, I've been not backing off on that. And I finally, David came off the fence and agreed to support it. And now Trevor is supporting it, too. Um, that Congratulations. He just That's, wants funding. So we're, we're kind of working on that still. But. Fantastic. Congratulations. Good yeah, job. I'm really excited because that's going to happen in the next few weeks, I think. Awesome. So, um, so, Carolyn, do we say that the select board is approving what as a priority? Um, well, we have a list of stuff. And, right. you but know, senior, senior housing is concerned. Yeah, senior housing was was right up there with senior center. I, you know, the senior center and senior housing were uh, right after the sewer plant. The sewer and, plant is number one because we're already borrowing money and we got to flush the toilets whether you're a senior or not. But, um, you know, and that's just so much money. Oh, but so what does it mean to be a priority for the select board? I think that's what Annalie's asking. Yes. Um, well, what that means is whatever we come up with, the select board is going to support it. it it comes down to bandwidth. Casey gotcha. herself isn't gonna do anything, but anything that we want to do, okay. I think we're gonna find support for, and okay. um, and also we can we can make meetings with the select board and actually get in. Yeah, we just gotcha. Yeah, good. A part of what's happening is poor Casey. You know, she's still working. 
you know, 12, 13 hour days on at least two or three times a week. And it, it's just getting overwhelming. And um, so she's just getting backlogged, but she's not, you know, so what we, if we want to do something and which you have, we've just move ahead and we just do okay. stuff as long as okay. we keep her in the loop. And so she doesn't feel yes. like she's left out. Um, and we do as much as possible. It will just keep moving it forward then. Okie doke. So we do the work, but make sure that the Casey and the select board know what we're up to. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so especially if it has to do with procurement, um, whether it's pre-engineering or any procurement stuff. All right. So we'll get to that in just a second. I'm curious, is the select board going to do anything about all the properties that we identified? Um, I would like to say again, yes, I think they were thrilled. We're going to move the prop, you know, the, all the ones on Pine Nook are going to go to um, the energy and, committee. So hopefully they'll do something with it. Awesome. I, I don't know. I doubt that anything will happen in my office. I'm, we're recorded, are we? Well, we are recorded. Yes. <laughs> I doubt that Casey has the ability. The bandwidth right yeah. now. Yeah, I would. I would say that it's not because she's not supporting it, but yeah. So is there value in, and this is not actually a senior housing conversation. This is just a citizen conversation. Um, how do we get the select board to create a new ad hoc committee to address the properties? In other words, I, I mean, we want to support the select board in, getting to act on this rather than having it just die. Yeah, well, we're moving ahead with the, the senior needs assessment. You know, we right. spent money for that. That's, the contract is being signed shortly okay. for that. And mm -hmm. um, that's moving forward. So that's gonna happen in the next, you know, few weeks as far as- uh, But that's would, for services. Right, that's mostly. for services. But what that's gonna do is match up with the church or the senior current senior center or not. And then we move, do we take rip down the church? Do we rehab the church? Do we rip down the senior center? Do we rehab the senior? So I, I feel like we can't really move ahead. If we're, if we're serious about putting senior housing behind the town hall, which I think is a better choice than over on Braeburn because people are pretty far away. I mean, that's, that's a little bit of a call for people. Whereas if it's behind the town hall, you know, it's, it's right off the village center. It's right off, you know, everything. Right. So right. I, I, if we're serious about putting, uh, I mean, the more I think about it, I really like that idea. So if we're serious about putting it over uh, behind the town hall area, um, we have to figure out if we're ripping down the church or not. Uh, we have to figure okay. out what we're doing with the senior center current. Okay. So, but that wasn't exactly the question I was asking. Oh, oh okay. Um, my question is, I would hate to see all the work that we did about the identifying the properties and all that money not being gathered onto the tax rolls go to waste. How do we um, propose that a ad hoc committee be created to uh, work with the assessor's office maybe or or however to to do something like begin with the low hanging fruit, all the parcels that are adjacent to ta current taxpayers, just go and find them. Would they would they buy it for you know a very reasonable price? Let's get it on the tax rolls. That kind of thing. Well, I guess what the best the best way to do that would be look at um, our next meeting is the twenty eighth of July. So we just put it on the agenda. How do we move with the select board? Okay. It seems kind of weird for senior housing to be bringing that, but I don't want the the work to go to waste. No, I agree 100%. It's just that I'm not sure uh, what we can or can't do, uh, um, you know, I mean, in our office. I, I think it is going to have to be something that this, the assessors here have. Well, don't you think that it makes sense if we had some citizens um a citizen committee work with the assessor's office so again you know the work is spread out and the the 
that that might make the most sense. So um, put out a call and start to think about who might be good on that committee. Yeah, well, the idea is to come sort of pre pre organized. That's so. a good idea. And I think don't you think that if we made sure that at least one member of the assessors was on the committee it would be a good idea. Yeah. Um, Skip Sobieski and what, what's um, the other person? Ch Ch uh, Chuck Shattuck. He's on, on the CPC and he's pretty good. He attends regularly. Um, he's a bright guy. Well, then why don't we reach out to him? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm serious. Because yeah. what you need is an advocate. Yep. And All right. You're not going to see it in John Cordaire because John John is, you know, I think this is his last term. He's not in great yeah. Great help. Okay. All right, Anna Lee, would you put, let the minutes reflect, <laughs> let the minutes show that Lily will connect, probably, I guess, email Chuck Shattuck about um, leading the effort and, yeah. and with the possibility of meeting with the uh, <clears throat> select board on the 28th. It oh. might end up having to be a later meeting because that's your treehouse meeting, isn't it? No, that's ours. Oh, it's the planning board tree has me. I wanted to be there for that. And That's well, twenty eight though. But so, Lily, you're going to reach out to Chuck Shattuck and who and and just Chuck Shattuck to see if he would be willing to um, participate in this effort. What he would recommend, and if he knows people that might be good to be on the committee with him. Yeah, I okay. I, I think that's a really good idea because you need you need somebody to spearhead that. Yes. Um, I mean, assessors and it should not be us. That's the problem. I mean, yeah. we got, we have our hands full. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just yeah. being truthful that, you know, Casey can't really do much more. Sure. That, and that's, I'd rather know the reality. Yeah. Than try and especially pile stuff on her. All right. So let's back up for a second. And, um, Carolyn, you, uh, Anna Lee and I approved the June 17th minutes. You and I have to approve the June 24th because it was just the two of us. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion. Approve. I second that motion. All those in favor? I care. Hi, <laughs> Lily Dwight. Fully yeah. approved. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. That business is done. Was there any, wasn't there also some discussion about, in terms of our select board presentation, about us meeting with some other people? So, you know, the town yes. beautification committee or something like the, that? The uh, town common committee. And Kate Lawless is the chair of that. She emailed me and she said, hey, I heard you guys are talking about senior housing being sort of at the heart of things. I need to talk to you. And she went on vacation, but I think she'll be back next week. And I said, let's just get together and have coffee first, her, she and I, so I can tell her what we found and what we're thinking and then we can talk about how we get our committees to meet and who what other committees should be involved the senior center committee presumably right um well council of aging is what um you know we have a council of aging so right we are, we're, we are going through some transitions right now at the senior center so hopefully that will be sorted out in the next month Okay. Is Chief Pachorik still leading the charge on the senior center project? Uh, well, the building assessment. Building the building board. assessment part? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the town building assessments, which is different from the senior center assessment. The senior center assessment is related to services. Right. And the um, building assessments were the physical ones. So Julie Chalfant is the chair of the building assessments, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Chief Pachorik was the driving force on the senior center stuff uh, a few months ago. Is he still leading that charge? Well, he was, again, he stepped into the void of not having um, adequate staff. And so I, I would presume, yeah. yes, he's okay. just been really um, distracted with um, getting the radios out. You know, it's millions of dollars that he brought into the county. Uh, for our radio system to be transferred over. So we got free brand new 800, you know, megahertz radios for every organization in Franklin County, fire, EMS, police. I mean, it was unbelievable. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Plus, he's, he's getting, he, 
plus they took over the system which means that we don't pay assessments to maintain the current antiquated system that they is so old that we don't even have parts for it so that's I mean, awesome I, he's amazing there's no denying um so let me begin by having coffee with kate lawless but i think that the other groups we should try actually it's probably more productive for us to meet with them sequentially right like i'll meet with kate just to update her and then we'll meet with her committee as a committee we, we are taking arpa money you could tell her this we're, we're taking arpa money to hire berkshire design group to give us a vision for pulling everything together you know the town okay. common the leary lot and uh you know move trying to pull everything together because okay. we need you know you don't want to you don't want to put down parking and then find out you don't want parking there and you got to rip it up and put it somewhere else so believe me yeah so the select board is doing that mass, yes we're trying to come up with a master plan for the whole downtown. The, the whole downtown which would include the church the library the senior center ultimately it's just and senior housing senior housing it's just we haven't okay no, we don't so, have enough information yet okay so the question is what are the mechanics of engaging all these groups that's really what we want to do because we want to make sure everybody is um, brought into the loop and they don't feel left out and so it seems like all these different committees all need to get together with whoever's engaged but it might, it would facilitate that meeting and be less expensive if we met with everybody first and maybe just one committee at a time. It, so senior housing meets with the, the village center committee, senior housing meets with the council on aging, senior housing meets with um, the, um, senior center committee or whatever is going on does that make sense and yeah. then and then maybe we can take responsibility for um, collecting input creating you know identifying trends and um, so that when this um, visioning process when the professional comes in we've at least gotten all the committee's input and then clearly there'll be public input as well but it might really help to facilitate um, the process and save a lot of money so who are those groups um lily you on that was the council all right the town common committee right the council on aging the senior center committee yeah group yeah group they're not an official committee but they're a group right yeah uh i don't think the building facilities at this point because what we're really talking about is siting and we're not talking about the building necessarily i don't think because the building committee is like this right now, I mean, they did an amazing job of saying, you know, this building will cost X percent per square foot to make it habitable or whatever. Um, but I don't, well, I guess, Annalie, maybe let's put them on the list and we'll figure out if it, if it makes sense. So we just don't forget them. Right. Maybe they could just have a representative to go once in a while because I, 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 I would see at some foresee at some point that they would be actively involved. Oh yeah, I think so, but we don't want to drag oh, them in. With building as, building assessment committee. Yeah, it's town building assessment that's committee. Right. I, think, yeah. I, think, I think that's right. Yep, yeah. sounds right. Okay, so it seems to me. I was thinking that some of the big work we have to do is start identifying funding and partners. Before we do that, is there any any other old business? 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Um, but what I was just going to correct myself and say, I don't think we can do that until we've done this work that we've just talked about. Because at that point we'll know, is the library still going to the state or not? You know, what, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I think that we cannot, until we decide where, what our town looks like, we can't really figure that out. Because, for example, there is this really cool thing called a 40R overlay that, um, if you incorporate subsidized housing, the state gives you a lot back um, and stuff like that. I mean, there's <clears throat> the whole binder for that mass housing thing is up on our resources um, folder, by the way. And someday we'll all look at it. <laughs> but I think it, I think, well, but what do you guys think? I mean, it seems to me that we need to have a cohesive vision before we can go after money. Um, I, I kind of, I do, yeah, it makes sense, okay? But I also am hesitating because I think um, we, we, since we're so at the start of this, sort of the start of the process, I mean, we are not locked into anything yet. I think it's better to find out at least preliminarily what kind of partners are out there. Are we really just stuck with, um, you know, uh, the partner, one of the partners, a private partner, like the partner that is building Sugarloaf, you know, the Sugarloaf condos. Mm -hmm. now, he was very interested in partnering with us if we ended up buying Channing Beat. And, you know, cause we were gonna do it. Right. We were gonna do senior housing and assisted living there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, senior center and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. But he, he, you know, I mean, he's hundred percent private. So, right. but he, he, he seemed to be very interested and willing to come to work with us. I don't know what he's bringing for the ta to the table, but um, cause we never got that far. Cause then right. Treehouse started looking into it and I was so relieved because I was like, you know, oh my God, this massive project yeah. on top of the pandemic. But um, anyway, I think we need to identify some of the players at least and the potential for money. I mean, are they bringing any money? Are they bringing, you know, what, what can we do? Cause I think that's going to help us shape and give input to Berkshire design because, you know, you had talked about those, you know, you showed us those little houses they are so cute, but you know, you're not going to get a lot of those houses on that and, you know, the parcel behind the town hall. So right. what, what are our other options? And but also I will say this, Carolyn, there was a big story in the paper today that oh. the vets um, hospital in Northampton or uh, in Holyoke, you know, that whole thing is being rethought about, they're talking about building housing and they're saying, throw away the, the uh, giant apartment buildings. We want small, like, not tiny houses, small houses, like the ones that we were looking at. And I think the world is. Um, oh, yes. I'm not, I'm not, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I think everyone would love those little houses, but I was just thinking, you know, what, what are our other options and what, you know, right. can we, can, instead of eight units, could we get, you know, 16 or something like that? Right. Well, <clears throat> you know, that little sliver of property that is on Route 5 in Greenfield, where they jammed in um, two rows of housing. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's near Animal Crackers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so really cute. I pulled into there and I went up and talked to a guy who was working in his garden. And they're like, right builders did them. They're like solar powered, net zero. They're small, but they have like 16 units in that sliver. I know, I know. And I, I myself have drive by there all the time and people look really happy there. I they to sell pretty quickly too. Yeah. It seems like. It seems to me that if they have 16 in that sliver, 
you know, uh, 16 times 3 times 6 18, we'll get like 48 or and still have plenty of space in the ball field. I'm, I'm just saying that we should we should probably see what partnerships are out there. Right. But so so um, anyway, right builders might be somebody to partner with. Yes. Speaking of which, because they are very green. Um, I believe they're Hampshire alum too, and uh, they are big on the net zero stuff. Well, um, and that would be really cool. Yeah. Plus, there's places like Loomis and Lathrop, who are nonprofit providers. I would definitely talk to them. I don't know what their interest in expanding stuff would be now. Um, another thing I just wanted to throw out there is I had a great conversation with the, the woman who runs uh, programs at the uh, YMCA, because I'm a member of the YMCA, and they are really interested in bringing programs to Deerfield. So I'm just put that for the community center. I said, oh, well, we're going to get a swimming pool, and you guys could <laughs> run the swim program. But it's just a thought about the whole thing about the community center could be a YMCA extension as well. Yeah. And I think they would be interested in that. So anyway, there's a lot of opportunity. But so what next? That's our big, our big work. I think that it is July 15th. And what do you all think of the idea of spending the next few weeks trying to connect with all these subcommittees um, seeing if like maybe next week we could invite the town common committee and maybe the week after we can see if the council on aging people will join us and the week after that we'll do the senior center let's just drive this bus yeah no if you're going to make this happen this is the way we got to do it because they're just you can't nobody else is going to have the time and it's not because they don't aren't supportive right so as long as we're producing stuff and we and you just you know you cc in casey and you come to the select board you know maybe once a month right report i mean if we're really digging up information or or, or we're creating information that should be evaluated just you know come to the select board meeting well, yeah, we want to drum up feedback. I mean, there's, you know, that we know for sure that a lot of people are and aren't going to like what we come up with. And so, yes, ma'am. Flesh that stuff out now, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's find out what the pros and cons are. So, Lily, are you suggesting that instead of you meeting individually, um, <clears throat> well, I'll meet with Kate just to. <clears throat> because she wasn't at that meeting we could save a lot of time if i just talked to her about <clears throat> okay besides which i'd like to meet her um but then have her and invite her and her committee to meet with us next thursday i, I don't know if they can but um let's just put that out there sharing plans sharing plans and then incorporating their committees you know so there's conversation you've already built out your stakeholders you've already expanded your circle and you're getting the information out and so you're building your base for support and and connections and networking you don't know what you know that meeting is going to lead to from the people that are involved and i right. so i would say i mean i think this is a really co cool idea I mean, this is okay. how you develop momentum. This is how you get people to assume that we're, you know, we're actually doing something because, you know, they're seeing activity there, you know, there's, there's, there's conversation, community conversation. Mm -hmm. and that's huge. Um, I mean, that's how you move stuff forward. Absolutely. So Carolyn, what's the, what, do you know what the timeline is to get the Berkshire involved? Um, I know, well, we have, we, I think we've already gotten ARPA money. And so mm -hmm. I think we're pretty much agreed that we're gonna use some money, that money toward, I mean, we, we're trying to keep the projects down because then you don't have, you have less reporting requirements. So I think that money is gonna be spent probably 
within, uh, you know, an, uh, another two or three weeks, we're going to award oh. the contract because okay. you don't you don't have to go out to bid for um, architects or lawyers or engineers. You do, you obviously you're you know you go out and get quotes, but you do not ha you don't it's not subject to bidding. So uh, we 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 like Berkshire Design because um, you know they 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 seem to want to take public input. You know how some people just jam down their ideas, mm -hmm. you know? um, and we've been kind of squishy with what we want, and so they've been but they've been listening to that, mm -hmm. and I and I so I feel comfortable with them, and they and they do do nice work. So. Um, I think we're going to go forward with it. Trevor likes them, so I I figured well, you know, so, so going to be with yeah. Um, we could invite them to a meeting um, once we hire them. Well, it seems to me that we should do as much groundwork before we include them, so, so we get the most yes. bang for our yes. buck, right? Yes. Well, first we we should feel out people. How they, I mean, do they feel as strongly as I do about having the downtown, you know, having senior center, I mean, housing right behind the town hall? I, I, so, I feel like that's an ideal spot. Yeah. So I think um, let's, let's spend the next few weeks trying to get together with these committees. Yes, Anna Lee. Sorry. Yes. So does that mean? Um, of the key people we should we're talking to, should we include someone from the schools or the rec department? Because that means real. That's a very good question. Baseball. Well, uh, Sue Antonellis is recreation director, and if she, probably she would not be too excited about having her field being developed without concrete um, options, uh, op alternatives. Yeah. I'm uh, moving to Braber. So I, I feel like yeah. that's a group, that's a group that we want to include and that we, the, we would develop the recreational fields as part of the process, but um, we better get our ducks, ducks in, in a row before we stir that pot because well, except uh, we're, we're already short fields. That's the problem. And word, that, word travels quickly. So that's true. You know, rather she learn it from us rather than from the street. Yeah. Well, we I I got I still don't have an answer from the lawyers. So I, I will no. chase down Lisa. I mean a part of it, it just keeps getting lost in conversations. It's not that we don't meet with them all the time. Um <laughs> so I'll just make sure I'll try to get a concrete answer. Can we put athletic fields on both parcels? Because if the rec department feels like we're going to develop both of those parcels with fields and the park, you know, we should be in the park the already. Yeah. If we should be getting a, a notification of our final um, announcement of the grant, because it's in the pipeline, it's been approved by Massachusetts. So apparently it's not a big deal to get approved on the federal level. So um, we should be getting almost a million dollars. So that project is going through. That's for which project are you talking about? The park project. The, okay. and so, so if that field gets developed, those fields get developed, and then we are making a concrete effort to figure out how we're going to develop the fields on Brayburn, if that's possible. You know, we got to get clarification from right. the lawyer. Then, then I feel like they they will not be upset that they're going to lose that field behind. Or they will be less upset. Yes, less upset. I, I'm yeah. sure they're feeling that yeah. um, no field wants to be given up because we right. don't have enough. But right. on the other hand, you know, if you're if you're trying to see a 50 year, um, you know, a, a 50 year um, time, I cannot right. imagine a better place and right downtown. I mean, it's on the same side as all your services it, you're you know you're preaching to the choir here okay so but i think the process is let's meet with other committees carolyn's going to find out about the brayburn thing i think you're absolutely right Annalie. i think we do need to 
um, include those guys, but we'll do them later because what if in talking to the town common committee, Kate Lawless says, oh, well, we had this idea and it turns out to be fantastic, right? So um, that's there's no need to go there yet until we hear from all the other committees and we do get more information on Braeburn. Does that make sense? Okay, but don't, don't, Italy, don't let us forget that. Don't let us forget them because you are absolutely right. They need to be in the, in the mix. So let's focus on um, getting the vision thing together for the rest of the summer anyway. I, I agree about finding out about financing and stuff, but it is, summer and if we meet once a week and they're working meetings and we're doing this we're, we're making progress right oh i i think just the activity level and i mean by meeting weekly for just even a little bit of time is so much better than the monthly because there's too much time in between and by at least checking in every week we're moving this forward because people are seeing oh they scheduled another meeting oh they're scheduling another meeting. what's going on in there <laughs> <laughs> but nobody wants to come but okay <laughs> but that's good does that does that make sense to you guys so um to meet with these committees over the next few weeks and then then the three of us you know try and have a meeting where we bring it all together, where we can summarize what we've learned. And, and also I think, um, you know, you made real headway with the finance committee because you, you did this, you did all this work about identifying how to get these parcels back on the tax rolls. I mean, that's huge. So, you know, even though we haven't spent any money yet, they, they are appreciative that we're trying to dig up revenue. Right. Um, and, and that we're just not looking for a handout. So, so that, speaking of which, maybe somebody from the finance committee could be on that other committee with the um, assessor. Yes, I'm sure you're not going to have volunteers. But what you do is you sort of nail them down in the um, in one of their meetings because you want this property to get back on the tax rolls. And would they help? And okay. uh, this is so. You know, they're always talking about taxpayers. Well, listen, come on, put a little work into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I get no volunteers about the school funding. I have been working on the school funding formula for two years now. And I would think we know there's at least a $300,000 impact. And I've gotten a temporary waiver. I'm trying to get it permanent. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've gotten no help from the finance committee at all. And it's just frustrating. Very, it's very frustrating. Um, but, <laughs> Let's get some new, new appointees. Yeah. Complain, but it is just the the formula is serious, you know. So having the waiver for the nonprofits, because that that value of property in town mm -hmm. gives us a certain percentage, and then uh, you know puts us at like the fourteenth wealthiest community in in the in the Commonwealth. But we don't collect taxes from them. And, um, so anyway, it, yep. they're being penalized. So somehow we got to rope in, you're correct. We got to rope in the finance committee. So, yeah. So, but I think that on that one, I'll begin with Chuck Shattuck. Yes. Because if uh, I can get him to say that he will take it on, um, and then I can suggest to him that he might try to get somebody from the finance committee. But, um, but you know, I think if we could find some of the, um, you know, the good old boys who know all the people, right? And they can look at the property and say, oh, that's, you know, Charlie so-and-so. I bet he thinks he owns it already or something. You know what I mean? They'll know, they'll know what's going on and that would be good, and especially in helping to guide the approach. So here's hoping if he says no, I don't know what to do, but we'll, I'll bring it to the select board. I'll bring it to the select board. Uh, yes. Yes. If, Ch if Chuck won't, won't do it, then um, I can um, see if I can get Skip. Skip seems to go, I mean, he's, he works with me on, on a couple different committees and um, in capital improvement for one of them. He's, he always comes. So I, I okay. we have two potential really good people. Okay. And, and if neither one of them works out, um, 
maybe John would even do it if we did, you know, earlier meetings or something or did Zoom. I'm not, I'm not sure how comfortable. John, who? John Cordaire. He's, he's, um, he, I, I, he just has not been feeling really well lately. He's, mm -hmm. and he's been doing this for, I don't know, 30 years. Forever. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, so we're agreed then. I, I will meet with Kate. I will actually email her uh, after this meeting and ask her if she and her committee can join us next Thursday. Okay. Um, and next Thursday is the 22nd, which would be great because then we could try to get on the agenda for the 28th, except Anna Lee couldn't be there because she's got her own agenda. Um, no. oh. oh, so I thought this, no. that it's, no, the 28th, I, I have, I'll be at the select board for other reasons. Okay. But I, I thought I saw an agenda select board for Treehouse. I put it on my calendar for the 28th. Is that true, Carolyn? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Okay. But anyway, we'll try and get on for the 28th um, okay. to both promote this, getting this uh, committee going about like getting the properties on the tax rolls, but also if we could have met with the town common committee, then we could come to the select board and just tell them also this is our, our plan. We're going to be meeting with all these different committees. Yes, and I think that's really good input because we would want Berkshire Design to keep in the back of their mind that we want senior housing, whether wherever it is, we want right. it downtown. So right. they need to keep that in the plan somewhere. Yeah. So our final bit of business, I believe, is how do we want to continue meeting going forward? And I would like to put in a strong bid to continue Zoom meetings on account of... I second. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All those in favor? I, Lily Dwight. I only will go. It's I'm, anonymous. <laughs> well, I you know by Thursday I'm really tired and I usually have meetings, you know, two or three meetings already before this meeting. Yeah. And, and sometimes I mean I can't. There's, once in a while I'm going to have to miss uh, a Thursday meeting because I do have a conflict. But the you know that's only like quarterly. Um. So the. It's really helpful to have them zoom because I agree. You know, dragging butt down to the yep. town hall. Yeah, we can. Up. We can. We all have a lot of responsibilities. Most of us, not as many as you, Carolyn. But the idea of being able to meet, work for one hour, and walk away without well, driving—it's just the travel time. Yeah. Uh, you know, now that we're in person for a lot of these meetings again, the number of meetings hasn't decreased, and. Um, it's hard to put the travel time in and people just don't understand this. It's no. just to me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really appreciate the zoom because you can participate. Yeah. I feel like I can participate. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think more people, I mean, if anybody when when we had a couple of people visit us in this meeting, they could easily participate, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm happy to keep zoom yeah. and, and plus okay. it's, it's just, I mean, especially if it's just us. I mean, it's so it's it's like chatting, actually. Just and getting stuff done. I send the birds. I send the birds. I send the birds. That's right. Um, Okie doke. So our marching orders. I got to get in touch with Chuck Shattuck, and I got to talk to Kate Lawless about having her join us on July twenty second at seven p.m. And I will try to get a definitive answer on Braber. Okay. And Anna Lee, you dodged it this time. This time. <laughs> this time. It okay. won't be for long. Um, but, okay, that sounds great. And guess what? 7.54. 54 minute long meeting. All right. All right. I'm sorry I was late. I no, really no worries. I move that we adjourn. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Wait, I need a second. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yes. Yeah. Stanley Yaswinski oh, says second here. <laughs> All those in favor. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to oh, stop this. Have a nice, have a nice